Hey guys, what's up? Lewin here at GarageBand and beyond. Today we're going to be doing a beginner's lesson in the auto drummer and how to get the most out of it. So that's going to be a really good thing to talk about, I think. Um, do me a favor right now, if you could just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's really easy to do. It's just a click. Just click on the button and uh, then you're a subscriber, which I would totally appreciate because then you get to watch all the videos that I put out, which is many of them. So click that subscribe button. So let's talk about the auto drummer. Okay, step one, new project. Set it to the tempo that you want it to be at, the key that you want to be at. Uh, especially if you're going to be singing, make sure you set that key. In this case, I didn't set the key because I'm not singing. Um, but anyway, get that tempo where you need it to be. Create the new project window, which is usually going to be an empty project. Set up whatever instrument you're going to record first as a rough track. Okay, so in my case, it's the guitar track. This is a very simple blues in the key of A. It sounds like this. Okay, okay, basic blues and A. So one of the things that this track is doing is going to give the computer a guide to look at for when it creates its drum track for you. It's gonna analyze this pattern and give you its closest approximation of what it thinks you're trying to come up with, okay? So when you are laying down this first scratch track, which is really for the drummer, um, just make sure that the rhythm's nice and steady and it's also sort of obvious, like what you want it to be. Don't embellish too much. You're really trying to make it obvious for the drummer. So you can go back, it might just be a scratch track, so you can go back and re-record this part later after you've come up with the drums. So just try to make sure that your initial drum, or sorry, your initial rhythm track is obvious and just sort of rhythmically clean um, and, and just, you know, that's it. It's clean and it's in time and obvious what the rhythm should be. So now I have my scratch track. Did I talk enough about the scratch track? So now I'm gonna hit the plus button. I'm gonna create a new drummer and let's see what it comes up with. Okay, right out of the gate, we got Max, he's playing punk rock. So I'm gonna, out of the gate, just say he probably didn't get this right. Let's listen to it. Okay, so there's a couple of big things that I don't like already. Uh, I don't want it to be crashing. I'm gonna switch it to a hi-hat. Now there's also the obvious problem here where the drummer is playing super, super straight, but this is a blues, which means that there's a swing to it, okay? So let's listen to it again uh, on the hi-hat and slightly simplified and brought down in loudness. All right, so the pattern seems okay. Now I'm gonna bring up the swing knob and let's listen. All right, so that sounds about right to me. So at 58%, all the, these numbers, have you ever noticed how poorly this thing is working? Uh, at the bottom, it says it's 50% swing when it's set to zero. I've never understood that. Anyway, I'm gonna set it up around 58, um, and that sounded about right to me. Okay, so I got the swing down, I got the pattern about where I want it. So now I'm gonna stretch it all the way to the end of my project, and we're gonna focus just on this last hit, just so we make sure we get it properly. And so here, is the last hit of the guitar, bass, and another guitar. Uh, we will listen to those in a minute. Um, anyway, we want it to end somewhere around here. Let's check this out. Okay, close enough for now. Okay, we will come back and address that ending later because it's not exactly right, but we will fix that. So here we go. We want to add fills where we need the fills to be, which is gonna be between the sections or anywhere where we, we feel like the energy of a fill and a crash at the end of it uh, is gonna be necessary. So we're just gonna go through it. You're basically gonna watch me work right now. And so let's just start. Pretty good so far. Okay, so here comes the bridge. Okay, so I'm going to say right here, we're going to start changing up this pattern. So I'm going to find where that happens on the timeline. Uh, of course, you want to make sure you're looking at the beats and project view here so you get the actual bars uh, per the song. So anyway, so here's where we want this first cut. This is the beginning of the bridge and the end of the bridge is here. 
Okay, so it's right there. So we want that. And I will imagine that we're gonna wanna cut these every two bars. Let's listen to it. Two, three, four, one, two, three, ba, 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 da, ba. Right, okay, so we want one here, which is, is gonna be every two bars. Uh, you know, so 13 to 15, that's two bars. 15 to 17, another two bars. We're gonna cut that. Um, I always, another thing is if you're gonna try to cut a section apart, you go uh, from the left to the right. And that's because as you can see, as I do it, the, the right side of the field stays highlighted and you don't go right to left, you go left to right. Uh, anyway, so there's that and now visually I can inspect this for fills and understand where it's playing the same fill So in this case, it's these three right here. You can see that they have um, That they have those fills are all exactly the same So we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So let's say we'll keep the first one the second one We're gonna make a little easier and it changed the fourth one and we're gonna make the fourth one really busy all right, let's try that. Uh, that looks good. It's not the same as the first one. Good. So let's listen to this section now. I'm gonna say no to the hi-hat and let's switch that over to toms. Let's go to basic tom part going on. Oh, whoops, 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 whoops. I didn't do that right. So I gotta select all of these. Here we go. <laughs> I'm gonna select all those, turn the toms on. Tom pattern number two down here. And here we go. Okay, pretty awesome. Uh, let's listen to it with the lead guitar and bass in there and just make sure those fills are not interfering with any of the guitar solo part. All right, that all came out pretty well. Um, okay, so that, you know, as you noticed, I just cut. And if you don't know, I use Command T to cut these fields apart. Wherever you do cut, there will be a fill before it and a crash uh, at the end of it. Again, don't let your fills be uh, repetitive. Make sure that you're using different ones. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do here, and this is one of these things that I wanna talk about uh, specifically. As you get to a different section, one of the things I see a lot of people doing is raising the volume the, of all of the drums in that section to get, you know, whatever that intensity that they're looking for. I highly suggest that you don't just go around and just change the volume, but what I do suggest is that you use this yellow ball and push it up towards the loud. It does increase the volume, but really what it's doing is changing the intensity of things like the snare drum or just the intensity that the drummer is hitting at, right? So you get more of a natural performance out of it instead of like, it's quieter, it's louder, it's quieter, it's louder. It's the drummer's playing softer, the drummer's playing harder, which is more accurate to what a real drummer would do. So in this case, uh, let's see, we were running around here, which was down here, and now I bumped them up a little bit closer to the loud. So we just get a little bit more intensity out of those toms and let's listen to that. Right, so you can hear that already. Let's do it all, let's, let's go all the way up and see what it sounds like, full volume here. I would probably bring that back a little bit it's a little too hard on those rim shots. And then this fill could be different. Let's make sure we're not copying. Again, I'm visually inspecting these fills through the section to make sure it's not exactly the same as any of the others. And that looks good. Better. So, so that's it. I just 
you know, in a, in a chorus for say, like if you're doing a normal rock or pop song, typically you want that chorus to lift. So again, just use the yellow ball and make it go up towards the louder button, <laughs> the louder side of it. Um, and, and you'll get more volume and intensity out of that drummer in a natural way. Okay. So that's that. So now let's see, the last big part of this particular track is going to be this last ending. So let's zoom in and, and take a closer look at this. I'm not a big fan of this fill. So let's just simplify that. And it looks like the hit's a little late. Okay, it is. So what we want is this hit, right? Here are the last hits on the bass and the guitars. But as you can see in the drummer track, it's not there, right? So what are we going to do? Really easy, you guys. This is super easy and fun. So uh, let's say we need to figure this out. Okay, so let's grab this last bar. I'm gonna hit a Command T. Now, this is the fun part of this, what you can do. This is heavy editing. Um, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add a new track. I'm gonna make it a MIDI software track, okay? Uh, we do not want it to be a piano because we wanna be able to hear the drums. So we're just gonna choose, well, let's see, what are we using? East Bay, right? Okay, so we will use the East Bay drummer, drum kit East Bay. Okay, so now if I grab this guy, uh, actually, I can't grab it. You got to copy it and go down here and you got to paste it in. You can't just grab and move it. So now I have this part, but as a MIDI instrument, so I can manipulate it however I want. So specifically, I'm looking for this hit, which in general should be around here. I'm a little early. Uh, anyway, we're going to go up to the editor. We're going to check it out. Okay. So here's what we want. We want a kick and a crash to be at the end and so i'm going to copy those this is already in place so i'm just going to hit a paste and there they are again going to get rid of this hit because it was late and now let's look at it again i still feel yeah it needs to be a little bit earlier so this is a combination of me checking the waveforms of my recorded tracks and then looking at the midi instrument and just making sure that they line up properly so in theory it should be about there all right, now let's listen to this ending. See what it sounds like. <laughs> okay, there's an extreme. Oh, I had this on. I can turn that off. Sorry, my mistake. Hey, that was pretty good. So now I can just slide this guy back up into here and it's in my timeline uh, where I need it to be and it will perform it just like the original track, but with the edited part. Now, one thing I might even add into these long sections right here. So you can see the bass plays two long uh, whole notes. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna omit anything here. I want this space to be empty. Gonna do that and delete it out, cut and delete it. And I'm gonna make sure that it does end up with a crash. So it's gonna go a little bit past and then what I want to do is come to the top of these whole notes and I'm going to make this section halftime. And I'm going to do that by going down here. It's always in the same place. Halftime is always here on every drummer. Listen, listen to this. Right? Hey, check that out. Nice awesome customized drum sound right so this is the backbone of this stuff and i again i've made other videos about this topic more advanced lessons the hidden secrets of the auto drummer so check out those videos i'm going to leave links for them in the more info area for the more advanced lesson this is a real basic one um but it is really just cutting you know wherever you want fills choosing the fills choosing the intensity of the sections lower in the verses higher in the choruses for example in this case, it's the bridge. Um, and then this little bit of editing just to make sure that it was exactly how I wanted it to be at that end because the, the timing of it was a little trickier than the, the thing was able to figure out. Um, but with a lot of time and patience and just sitting here and playing with the fill wheel or, or sitting here and playing with all these different options, um, you can get so many different patterns, so many different sounds. It is a little bit time consuming to, if you're really searching, you can really 
go down the a dark hole of searching for drum patterns. I've done it myself. Um, so just find the one that works the best, you know, first, and then manipulate that one. Don't go digging forever because chances are you won't find it. Find what comes in close and then work with that one to make it what you need it to be. That's my advice on that. Um, anyway, you guys, I hope you got something out of that video. I really do because I think this is a unbelievably powerful part of GarageBand that is highly underrated by most people. Um, but it's because when they hear it, the performance of this auto drummer is not, hasn't been tweaked and hasn't been refined to a point where it's just indiscernible from a real drummer. Because I can't tell you how many times I've sent recordings to people to listen to and they're like, wow, the drum recording sound awesome on that. And I'm like, thank you, but it's the auto drummer. So if you get it right, um, you will be able to convince even the most like trained ears will not be able to tell. Uh, unless they were the ones who created these plugins. <laughs> they might know. Anyway, you guys, I think that's about it. I'm rambling now. Have an awesome weekend. I really do appreciate you guys watching every video that I make. Please, again, hit that subscribe button and check me out on Patreon. If you'd like the content that I'm putting up here on YouTube for free to you guys, this is because the patrons on my Patreon page are supporting the channel and continuing uh, to do so. And so if you'd like to be part of that to contribute to the future of this channel and the content that I come out, check out my Patreon page. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.